I didn't think it was gonna go this far. He's really taking it farther than I even expected. Like way farther than I expected. He's trying to adopt my child and you're you no, know, you're not a friend of the family. You're not a, 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 an adopted parent. You how you just gonna adopt somebody's child? You do that. I've told you five times now. Reach out to the lawyer and find out what's going on between Mr. Brinkley, you and the child. I can't say it any clearer. Okay, so today we have a wild case study. We have a mother who was going through a hard time at some point and she gave up her daughter to this man and signed her rights away. Now it's been about three years. He's been taking care of her daughter along with his partner and she's wanting her daughter back. Instead of hiring an attorney and going through the process, she just kept making phone calls to him and saying what she was going to do to him. So he filed a restraining order on her and that's why they're in court right now for the restraining order. Take a second to make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and click the notification bell for all updates. Won't waste any time. Let's go ahead and jump into it. All right. Mr. Brinkley, go ahead. Tell me what's going on. Okay. So, um, Irania is Italy's biological mother. We have a pending adoption on. Um, I have an attorney and everything for the adoption. Italy has been with me full time since she was right after a year old. Um, the way that she came into our life is because Irania's mother and I are extremely close. She was going through some things personally, so Italy ended up coming to live with me. We ended up having a conversation where the, we decided that I was going to go ahead and adopt Italy. Irania signed over all of her rights and everything. Um, and then she just decided that she was going to pretty much move to like the Midwest, but she's also she was also um, incarcerated for a little while. Right away, we see that the mom is a criminal and a deadbeat. She couldn't take care of her own daughter, so she left her with her friend. I wonder why she didn't give the child to her father or even her own family. She's sitting up there with her sister today. Why did her sister get her? Um, the first one of the first things is I had to um, end up taking Italy when she first came to live with me. We had to take her to the hospital because she had a UTI, but I didn't want to take her to the hospital by myself, me being a single man with a little girl. So her mother um, went to the hospital with us. Well, because of her being so young, they had a defects worker come out. The defects worker advised that she could only go home with me and my partner at the time. Um, we ended up having a conversation with Irania. We went to a UPS store in Powder Springs where she signed documentation. All of that has been emailed over, but she signed over all of her rights and everything. And she agreed to everything. She spoke to the defense worker when she was incarcerated and everything. Um, so for like the next maybe about four years or so, we were pretty much chasing her down to try to have her build a relationship with the child, but she didn't want anything to do with it. She advised me herself that she wasn't ready to be a mom. She would rather, you know, party and just have a good time. That's all fine and dandy. I told her, live your life. She'll be taken care of. That's fine. Yeah, she didn't have time for her daughter. She was more interested in being a city girl, living her best life during hot girl summer. Um, So May of this year, um, she has now been, she's told me on several different occasions that she hopes that I die. She can't wait until the day that she looks over in the casket and see, you know, see me dead. Um, she, um, I have recordings as well as my, my coworker, as well as my partner has heard her. She has now said that she knows my address and that she's going to kill me. She said that I wouldn't be able to speak if they were to find my body. Um, she then, so once I block her, what she'll do is she'll get someone else's phone. Um, I sent that in the text message. I mean, I sent that in the email as well, where she texted me from someone else's phone, telling me that she was gonna see me soon as she was gonna kill me. She's threatened to kidnap the child. Um, she threatened her mom to burn their house down with them in the house. Um, let's see, um, she, late last year, um, as it pertains to the child, she was at a hotel with the child and there was some random man in the background. And so I had to, at about midnight, end up going to the hotel to rescue the child because a completely different man, which her sister sent me the address to her job. Can you show me where she's text you or play me a threat on a phone? Oh yes, absolutely. Um, and then I, I just, for some reason, I didn't get the emails until yesterday. I mean, I didn't get the paperwork until yesterday in regards to the court date. So I didn't get to email everything over until this morning, but I did go ahead and email it over um, with the text messages and everything with her threatening. But, um, hopefully you can hear this, but here is a recording. He's about to play a voicemail from this psycho, but you notice one thing with all these courts, doesn't really matter the state. 
Why is it that whenever you have a case with a man versus a woman, especially when the man is the plaintiff, it seems like they try to tell them at the last minute about the court date or they'll send mixed messages by saying that it's at one time when it's really at another time, like they're trying to sabotage the case or something. I don't know, that could be a coincidence. And then this mother is out of order. She left her daughter with this man and although he seems like a decent person, why would you do that? And then she had her daughter with her in a hotel around some other man. At work, and if you threaten, if you threaten to come to my house or to kill me one more time, we're going to have a problem. Stop. Oh my God! I'm gonna go to your house and kill you. Oh my God! You just go find your ass. You just go find your ass. Oh my God! Let me think about the sound though. Then you do. She said, let me speak to my child. It's not even your effing child, bro. Yeah, but why did you leave her with him for four years? And did you give the father the opportunity to take her? Instead of passing her off to a man that you're now calling a stranger. That's fine. Well, that's fine because Detective Dunley has everything that you said to me. Because every time you call my phone, you get disrespectful. I'm tired of you threatening my life. I'm tired of you. I'm tired of you. And what are you going to do when you snap uranium? What, 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 what are you going to do when you snap uranium? That's fine. Irena, you've ruined your you've ruined your own life with the drugs, with the alcohol, with everything. This is how she's talking to him, calling him bees and everything else, saying that he ruined her life. No, ma'am, you ruined your own life. You're the one who gave your daughter to him. He's the one who's been providing and protecting your daughter for the last four years while you was out doing whatever you wanted to do. The threat. Where was the threat? And what you gonna do when you find me right now? You're not gonna do anything. Okay, that's fine. So you know what? So that's fine. Your whole conversation is recorded and my co that's fine. That's fine. This entire conversation is recorded and my co-worker has heard everything and your threats again. That's fine. I'm gonna go to Sandy Springs right now and file a restraining order against you. Goodbye. So that's that when um, the Sunday prior to that, um, my partner was at home. We had just gotten home from church. She told me that she was gonna kill me. That's when she told me that she had my address, that she was gonna kill me. Um, her mother has heard all of this as well. Um, let's see, there was a text message. So when I blocked her from that, from her, her telephone number, she then started messaging me from someone else's iCloud, acting like she was the child's father. But what she does not know is that the child's father has reached out to me and I've had my own conversations with no. him where he's not aware of anything. Yes, I do. I have no. his contact information. Stop arguing with yeah, each other. Stop arguing with each other. Go ahead, sir. Um, so I have his contact information as well. Um, she, um, he didn't know that any of this was going on. Um, let me see what else. And that's what I've been wondering the whole time. How was there an adoption pending when the father was not involved? It sounds like this witch was already alienating the father. She didn't want her, but she also didn't want the father to have her. So she gave her to somebody that she was close with at the time, somebody she saw as her friend. And then she went around signing papers as if the father had nothing to do with it and she didn't need his permission for anything. Why? Because she believed that she owned the child and she could do whatever she wants. That's why she would leave her daughter for four years and then come back and try to pick her up. Uh, had a conversation with him. Um, I, I did end up going to the, she's called the police on me twice and lied to the police and told them that I kidnapped her. And so she tried to file a false Amber Alert on me. And they've told her if she files another false report, or tries to file another false report on me that she will be held for that. 
Um, but it's it's constantly she she will call my phone like the last time um, that's in the the emails as well. She'll call my phone thirty times within a matter of an hour, and when I'm at work, she'll just continuously call. Again on that I think it was that Tuesday, my coworker um, Ansley, who's on here as well, sat in the room with me as I recorded that call and told her that I was recording a call. I heard her tell me that she was going to kill me. Um, you know, and it, it's it's getting to a point now, even if I, I don't know if she really has my address or not, but with you threatening my life at this point, I've now had to get a protection dog. Um, my partner and I have considered getting a license to carry because I don't know what she's capable of. Um, but I'm at this point, you know, I could deal with, you know, I hope you die and different things like that. But at this point with you telling me that you're going to kill me and you're going to have someone find me and y'all are going to come and kill me, it's becoming an issue now. All right. Go ahead, Ms. Ponte. I'll hear from you. Sorry, Your Honor. It started when I was incarcerated in 2017 and my mother had made me aware that my daughter had a UTI and that um, I needed to sign something, but due to her real biological father not being in my life and me not even knowing Nigel Brinkley at all, I never even knew him, said that he was going to help me and that I needed to start a temporary custody until I was released from jail, which was a week later. After that, it skyrocketed into him, oh, I'll help you and I got this and I'll put her in daycare to completely no conversation, no visitation. So I was back and forth from Chicago and Georgia trying to get myself together. Honestly, that is the truth. Once I did get established back in 2020 last year and I came back, well, I was back and forth and we never really even had a problem with communication. So it really started when he felt as if I was getting myself together. So now that I can get my child back, he's like, oh, I spent all this time with her. You're not getting her back just like that. I don't care if you got it together. Um, it came back to next, last year. I'm like, okay, well, you're not answering my phone calls. That's a problem. That is my biological child. Why shouldn't I be able to reach out to her? Um, you're not going to see her. I never knew where her school was. I never knew her doctor. I've never even knew where Nigel Brinkley lived, not once. Have I ever knew? I still to this day do not know. He served me. I just moved into my apartment. How did he find my address? I've been open. So with him talking about my mom, I think him and my mom made uh, made an agreement upon themselves that I signed my rights over when we went to UPS in Sandy Springs, Georgia. And it was written out in paper that says, that I give temporary custody to Nigel Brinkley until I was released out of jail. We never went to court, nothing was stamped, none of that. After that, I tried to believe that he had the best interest between me and my daughter, but it was not like that. Constantly being blocked, not, be, not being able to see her on her birthday, not being able to see her um, on Mother's Day, Christmas. Uh, I had her for like five seconds. Um, him and his partner was so guarded over okay, her. So like, all I'm curious about, ma'am, is all this this going back and forth where you've been calling him and doing all this. That That's what I'm concerned about as far as the- Ma'am, uh, I have no whereabouts of my child. So yes, as a mama, I'm a get, you know, out of character in the sense of me not even knowing where she is. Out of character? Ma'am, you have no character. You left your daughter with a man that you just said out of your own mouth was a complete stranger to you. I can't even hear her voice. That's that's a problem. And for you to be helping, is that helping or hindering? You're you're saying it, it says and then that I forced her, tried to force her to have a relationship, but yet you keeping me on block. How are you forcing me to have a relationship? Why would you have to force the mother who wants to be there? That's where this all this phone calls and everything. If I knew where he was, then he will have a reason to say, oh, she's been to my house and she wants okay, to Okay, ma'am, what about the family. recording I just listened to? Yes, ma'am. What about it? I mean, what was all that about? It was basically about him. I've been telling him for years, I want my child back. And he's been telling me, oh, you're not even a mom. I'm adopting yeah, her. Why don't you get in touch with the person he says that represents him? Get in touch with the lawyer. I, I didn't think it was going to go this far. He's really taking it farther than I even expected. Yeah, he's really taking this seriously. More serious than some biological fathers in the same situation. And, you know, one of the reasons is because you can't scare him with the same tactics. You can't control him with the threat of child support because he's not the bio father. He's trying to adopt the child. He's already been taking care of her. 
she thought she was going to get her way by calling the police. Well, this guy was smart. He already made her sign papers. So whenever the police showed up, he can show them, hey, I'm the one that's supposed to have this child. So now she's thinking that she's going to be able to just yell and scream her way through it like she normally would with her baby daddy, but it's not working and he's not going for it. He's basically saying, I've had your daughter for four years. If you want her back, you're going to have to go through the process to get her back. And calling the police, kicking, yelling, and screaming is not the process. Like, way farther than I expected. He's trying to adopt my child. And you know, you're not a friend of the family. You're not a, 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 an adopted parent. You How you just going to adopt somebody's child? <clears throat> I am well capable, man. I work. I have my own apartment. I have a support team. He, regardless if he think I, my mother does not support me, she very much does support me. My mother is up in age and I'm not gonna pile her on with this. Nigel needs to give up my child because it, that's enough. I did not sign over my rights. And if, if he say I did, he manipulated me into signing and scaring me into thinking that DCFS is my only child and I'm young. I don't know how this stuff goes. He manipulated me into thinking I signed my entire rights over to him. And that cannot be true, ma'am. It never fails. Every time they have the answer for their dumb or stupid behavior, they always have to become a victim. So now she was young and she was manipulated. No, what happened was you didn't want to take care of your child. You used him to do it so you could run out and have a good time for a couple of years. And now that you're ready to calm down, you want your child back. And there is a way for her to get her child back, but she doesn't want to go through the work to do it. Your Honor, it, well, cannot. it sounds like you need to get in touch with his lawyer. So mean, how do I go about that? He just needs to keep Ellie to himself. I mean, I don't I, know. I, There's I, a lawyer. I can't. I'll be more than happy I can't to provide give you all of that. This restraining order is for twelve months. I'll be more than happy to provide that information. I don't know what in the hell is going on today? <laughs> Ma'am, he has a lawyer. Get in touch with that lawyer. That's all I can tell you. But right now, y'all both got it. This is going to go south real quick. You can stay away from him. Y'all work this out. Whatever's going on. His, what's your lawyer's name, sir? Jeffrey Bunch. Jeffrey Bunch. Look it up on the Georgia Bar. GABar.org. Ma'am. Okay, do you believe this explains how this is going to go? Stand by. Stand by. Listen to, listen, to listen, to listen, to listen to me. 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 Jeffrey Bunch, what's his phone number? Um, let me get that for you. It is uh, six seven eight 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 zero zero. There you go. That's where you go start about figure out that about the child because I don't know. Okay, ma'am. I I, I still got questions though. I don't understand. Questions for who? You don't ask me any you questions. Too. You don't ask me any questions. Got questions for you? Huh? What questions do you want to ask me? How did this protective service thing go? You're saying I cannot be around my biological daughter for 12 whole months, even though I've never done anything? Ma'am, you're going to stay away from Mr. Brinkley, okay? But what about my child, ma'am? I haven't seen my daughter at all. He's been literally keeping her away from me phone Pam, calls. reach out to that lawyer and speak with that lawyer i'm not dealing with the adoption i'm dealing with the protective order between mr brinkley and what you adoption what adoption i didn't agree to no adoption i need to know when the next time i can see my child i'm gonna say this you one last time miss aponte maybe you're not listening maybe your sister needs to hear this reach out to that lawyer because whatever's going on with that child somehow involves that lawyer and it ain't happening today. So reach out to that lawyer and find out what's going on with the child. I don't know. I have no clue what's going on as far as Mr. Brinkley and his partner. I'm trying to tell you what's going on. She's okay, clearly but trying to undermine and adopt my child. I'm right putting this in place. You guys figure that out. If you want to call the lawyer and find out what's going on with the child, ma'am, you do that. I've told you five times now. Reach out to the lawyer and find out what's going on between Mr. Brinkley, you, and the child. I can't say it any clearer. Stay healthy and safe. Have a good weekend. Yeah, I ain't gone.
She's so angry, but this is all her fault. She should have had her own child or contacted the father to give the child to him. She didn't do that. Sounds like her family didn't want her daughter either. So this man, he took interest because he can't have his own kid and she had no problem giving her to him. Now years later, she's trying to come back around and get her, but she's wasting time being stupid. Calling the police over and over was a waste of time. Calling his phone 30 times a day was a waste of time. She should have been contacting a lawyer to help her. And there's so much help out there for her. Number one, she's a woman. And number two, they have programs where she could have been assigned a lawyer for free. Or she could have saved the money up and paid for a lawyer. Then she's all up in court trying to get the judge to answer to her about the adoption when this judge had nothing to do with it. She's in her courtroom for a restraining order that he was trying to get against her and the judge granted it. All this, I don't know what's going on in this baby bop bimbo babble. It's just a waste of time. At this point, if you want your daughter, the adoption was not even complete. It was pending. So you file the appropriate paperwork and fight it in court. Let's go ahead and get the conversation started below. Special thank you to Paul. I appreciate you, Paul, for always watching and showing support. Shout out to our sister, Trey Shell, as well as Lamar and Judas Lyon. I appreciate all of you. And I can't forget about our sister, Amanda. She sent this in and wanted me to cover this. Don't forget that you can support this channel as well. Links to Cash App and PayPal are below. Ladies, fellas, want a balance analysis? Want the truth from a woman's perspective? Then you're going to want to subscribe to this channel and don't forget to like and share.